start, I, you know, camp's important. I mean, it's obvious, you know. I've been all over the country <laughs> the last two weeks and will continue to go uh, for camp. And camp is life-changing. It's life-altering. There could be kids called into the ministry. There could be kids that, for the first time, kneel down and accept Christ as their Savior. Statistically, in our group, that can happen. Here, our kids could go out and be world changers, change the generation. At District Assembly, our general superintendent said that as a church, we've lost two generations. I don't know about you, we can't afford to lose anymore. We just can't. That's just the reality that we live in. So this morning, we're going to have our, our students come there. We have 14 going, not all are here, and that's okay for various reasons. That you know, We're going to pray for them too. But here's what I want for you. I want the church, everybody in here, we are the church. I don't know if you knew that or not. We're the big C. <laughs> we're going to circle around them. We're going to pray for them. My prayer is that God's favor would rest upon them. His blessings would, would be there for them. That they would drown out all the stuff that's, that's surrounding them, all their, all their storms that maybe they face, right? You see, because when you go to camp, you just don't magically appear at camp and say, oh, everything at home is fine, it's great, it's dandy, it's all good. It doesn't happen that way. You see, the burdens go with them. I've seen it firsthand in the last two weeks. Seen it firsthand. And I've always said to kids, listen, I know that your life is tough and it's hard. I get it. But God's faithful. Amen. He is faithful. And so the, I want the teens to come down. We're going to pray. We're going to lay hands on you. I believe that's important. We as a church, we're going to lay hands on them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray. Just kneel down right here. It doesn't matter. It's wherever you want to be. We're going to pray for you. I'm going to pray. Parents, come on, let's go. Let's don't wait. This is our generation of world changers right here. I see their faces. They said yes to go and spend time this week to, to draw closer to God. And I pray they do. I pray they do. Lord, we love you today. <laughs> We're thankful for these students who are going to go to camp. Lord, I pray that as they go to Mina, Mina's not some special holy ground place, and it's just a place, Jesus. But when you show up, it becomes that place. Jesus, I pray for your divine protection, your divine being, who you are, your spirit, just to bring down on them this week. But God, may, they, may you rebuke all the outside noises, all the outside storms. May they just come and cease to exist. And, and when they go and they, they turn their heart to you, leave the drama at home, leave the, the bickering, the words, leave all that stuff at home. That when they come to the camp, they, they see you and they hear you. And God, may you, may you call them to what you want them to be. May your will be done in their life. Or may your favor be with them. And Lord, may we as a church this week make it our priority to daily pray for them. Say their names, call their names out in direct prayer and communication with you. Lord, Help them to have a firm foundation. Help their roots to grow so deep that no matter what comes their way, no matter what storm comes their way, Lord, they were able to withstand that because, God, they stand on that promise of you. And, Lord, we pray this today. We pray this in your mighty, precious name. We're praying for the Satan to be rebuked, to flee. He has no power, no stronghold, no nothing. If you are for them, then nothing else can stand against them. And Lord, we pray all this today, God, in your mighty name. 
Amen and amen. 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 Well, I'm excited that we do have 14 going to camp. And then the following week, we have some going to kids' camp. Oh, sorry, if you're a kid and you need to go with Miss Jennifer, that'd be, this is your time to do so. But I'm excited, you know. I, uh, I want to say thank you, first off. Well, I need to apologize. Uh, I'm probably going to walk a lot today around. So if you get tired of looking at me, I'm just, like doing this. I'm just giving you a workout so you don't have to go to the chiropractor tomorrow, okay? And I, I'm, not, I'm not Snapchatting anybody, so don't think that. Although you never know, I might, if, I do, if I do this, then you know I am, but don't worry about it. Especially if you go to sleep, so don't go to sleep. This is my notes today, right? And the Lord has put this on my heart, and so we'll just have to go with it. But continue to pray for me, right? You know, I spoke, uh, it seems like a month ago, I did a kids camp in Southwest Indiana. Great camp, 144 kids, 22 adults, 166 people total, right? Great camp. Lives transformed, kids coming down the altar, seeking, seeking his face, wanting to be called into the ministry, right? Accepting Christ for the first time. And I, and I always think in my head, Lord, you have a, you have a, you have a sense of humor. <laughs> like, you want me to do that. You want me to go and preach your word to these kids. And I think that, but it's like, God's like, no, Brian, I have a purpose for you. This past week, I started Last Sunday night, South Carolina, we did a preteen camp. This is fifth and sixth graders, 50, 52 kids, 10 counselors, three adults, and 65 people. It doesn't seem a lot, like a lot, but it was life-changing. And then Wednesday morning through Saturday morning, yesterday, 110 kids, 20 counselors, total of 130. 379 people that I've been able to preach to in these last two weeks. This week, the, the, the camp called me. They said, hey, uh, we're sorry, but we're going to have to put you in a room with boys. I said, I'm the speaker. I've paid my dues. I don't want to be a counselor. What do you think I said? Okay. They said, they said well, we had to do that because there's been a record number of attend- attendees wanting to come to camp this year. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, the Lord's dealing with me. I've got to go back to a place that I've got a lot of hurt. And I pray, Lord, are you sure? I don't want to go back there. <laughs> I don't. I'm being vulnerable with you. I, I don't really want to go back there. But then God's like, why not? I've got you. And so I've had to say, yeah. I've had to say, yeah. There is no other, there is no other answer but yes. Yes, I'll do it, Lord. Yes, I know you're faithful. Yes, I know you're going to be with me. Yes, I know you're going to be with me in the middle of the storm. Yes. This past Thursday night, I noticed the kids were restless, laying down the pew, sleeping. And I said, well, they're just tired. But then they started talking. You know, me, I have ADHD. If you start talking in the middle of service, you're going to make me lose my my concentration. I stopped. I put my iPad down. I just stopped. I backed up. Still talking, you know. I closed my notes, and I said, you know, and I gave this speech. I was like, I walked off that platform and said, Lord, they weren't listening to me. They heard nothing I said. Friday night changed my mind. Some of you have seen it on Facebook, and if you don't have Facebook, you can follow me. If you don't want to follow me, I get it too. Here's what the kids said. I've accepted, I've accepted the call to ministry. When God closes one door, he opens another. God is faithful. I've accepted Jesus into my heart. I don't understand much English, but I understand the language of the Spirit. You see, we had three Hispanic churches there. The majority of the kids spoke no English. And that's what they said. Don't follow your plan, follow God's plan. This is one that has, people have commented to me. You preach so good, I actually pay attention. And I said, well, obviously not. You fell asleep. Anyway, act, don't react. Don't allow your anger to control you. God's plan is perfect. Anger blinds us. To be, to, be, to be Jesus' disciples, I must deny myself. Be a leader, not a follower. Not to be selfish. God made me. 
When you take your eyes off Jesus, you sink. God speaks when we are quiet. Jesus, forgive our, Jesus forgave our sins. Thankful God changed my brother. Happy God created us and gave us life. Never turn your back on God's word. God doesn't, doesn't want us to seek revenge. God will always come through. Don't carry anger and focus on God. Don't think your plans are better than God's plans. God wants us to be a leader, not a follower, not a bully. Don't be prideful. I'm not smarter than my parents. God all, God's ways is, is better than my ways. Actions speak louder than words. Trust God's plans. The story of Peter walking on water. Obey, obey Jesus. Act, don't react. Jesus is the son of God. Anger takes control. We can't allow it. Don't be like Nabal. God has given you the power and the strength. Have Christ-like friends. Live in a Christ-like this world. How to work with each other. Be a leader, not a follower. Listen to God's voice in all of the storms. The first time I ever went to altar and I accepted Jesus. Jesus is for everyone. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be nice to other people. Walk away. Anger will blind you. Make peace. Pray, pray and seek God. Sleep doesn't much happen to camp. That's an amen. Life is hard. It's not always about you. Jesus saves. Obey the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus loves you no matter what. I am a child of God. That's kids from first grade to fifth grade. They get it. They understand. When I thought that they didn't, they really truly did. And yet we have adults who sit in the church and it's like, well, I've been here all my life. Well, good for you. But do you get it? Do you understand that God, that Jesus is the Son of Man? Do you understand that Jesus is here to save lives? He can transform a nation when we seem so divided and so broken? He can, and he will. But you see, here's the thing. We as a church, we have to get off our butts and do something and stop being lazy. God's called us to serve, not to be served. I thought about you guys all week, and I said, you know what, Brian? That church can do it. Those people want to do it. Those people believe that they are on this corner for a purpose. And I still firmly believe that with every ounce of my being, that we are here for a purpose. But I'm going to challenge you. Don't sit back and get comfortable. Those kids slept on essentially plywood beds for three nights, and yet when they came in, they listened and they learned. And we're in a, we're in a padded pew. Man, my heart is heavy for our nation. Even the events of last night, this is not a political speech. This is not, this is just whatever. We need to be praying for our, for our nation right now. We do. We need to pray for our leaders. Pray that God would get a hold of their hearts, transform their hearts. And I asked the kids, I said, think about this. If you and this group, or even this group, if you were to get your heart right with God, you were to be on fire for God, let's just say the 56, if you were to do that, how much would your community, or your school, or your family, how, how, how transformed would it be if they were to do that? It would be life-altering, generational changing. I believe that. It's our duty. It's our call. We've all been trapped in storms before, right? It gets scary at times, even Monday night. I'm sitting there on my phone watching YouTube TV and, and watching this news report and, and seeing all the tornado warnings and all this kind of stuff going on. And, I, you know, I'm 700 miles away and my family's here and there's absolutely nothing I can do. Oh, but there was. I got down on my knees and I prayed, Lord, please, you know I'm here for a purpose and would you know that, sh that storm shifted east? I watched it. I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I had to make sure I was still awake. God hears our prayers in those storms. I think about Matthew chapter 14, 20, 22 to 33. Even before that, Jesus is feeding the 5,000. He's out preaching on the hillside. The disciple says, well, we got to send them home. we got to send them home. You know, they got to go home to their village. they got to eat. they got to take care of themselves. And Jesus is like, why don't you feed them? They said, we can't feed him. We only have a couple of fish and some bread. He's like, so bring it to me. They bring it to him. You know what he does. Jesus, boom, 
Feeds the 5,000, it says. But then they're done. Now we're in Matthew, uh, I think it's 14, I think it's 22, that's where I'm going to pick up. He sends the disciples out in a boat. They're on their way. Jesus goes up and begins to pray and do everything he's doing. Scripture says about 3 o'clock in the morning, a storm comes, a great wind. And it begins, the waves are so massive, the boat begins to get tossed and turn and tossed and turn and tossed and turn. And the disciples grow weary, they grow tired, they grow scared. They're like, what's going to happen? We're going to die. And all of a sudden, they look up. Scripture says, they thought they saw a ghost. They're in fear. They're, they think, what is this coming at us? It must be a ghost. But it wasn't. It was Jesus. Jesus was coming to them in the middle of the storm. In the most craziest way, he's walking on water. And he says, it's all right. It's all right. I'm with you. And then Peter, being Peter, says, well, Lord, if it's you, then call me out. Now, I love this interaction because depending on which translation you read, it says, some say, come on, some say, come. It doesn't matter. Because I think, this just is my interpretation, so take it for what it's worth. I think in that moment, God's almost like frustrated with Peter. Like, Peter, you know it's me. Like, you can see me. You know it's me. And the audacity of you to, to tell me, to ask you to ask me to come out. So Jesus is like, okay. Okay, Peter, come on. So Peter gets out of the boat. First off, I would have never gotten out of the boat. I've been in the ocean with six foot plus waves. I'm not getting out of the boat. Not a chance. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. You're not getting out of the boat either. You're with me. I'm doing everything I can to drive it faster to get to the shore. But Peter's like, hey, that's all right. I'm getting out. He might have not been that excited. But maybe he was. I don't know. But Peter gets out. And he starts walking toward Jesus. It gives us this great picture of obedience in Peter. He's like, you know what? I'm not worried about this crazy storm around me. I know God's there. I know he's faithful, and I'm going to walk toward him. But in the, in the instance like we do, we start getting focused on life situations. We start getting focused on life storms around us. Well, they're talking about us. They didn't come to church. They didn't do this. They didn't do this. I don't like them because of this. I don't like them. And then Peter began to sink. He took his eyes off Jesus, you see. But here's one of the Lord ports, the, the portions I love about this story. It's if you go back and you read it, it says that Jesus was on the horizon. So we don't know how far the horizon was. They say, what, seven miles you can see over the horizon? So let's just go with that. On the horizon, Jesus was. But the moment that Peter began to sink, Jesus reached his hand out was right there in that moment. That's powerful to me. That he was there for Peter. When all those storms are going around, and he reached down, he looked at Peter and said, Peter, why do you lack faith? I was there with you the whole entire time. Why are you so worried about it? Think about it like this. I'm going to do an analogy. Carl, would you come up here? These are my headphones. I think they're charged. We'll go with it, okay? Put them on for me, Carl. I want to play some music for you. It's going to be your, your, your style of music, don't worry. All right. I'm going to turn it down so it doesn't shock you. Okay, you ready? Is it playing? Is it loud? Is it loud? Keep going. All right, go over there. Oh, no, no, no. Stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. Right here. Now, when you look at me. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you, I know it's kind of weird. I get it. You're in church, you're like, wait a minute, I thought we were, we're not kids' shirts. Don't worry about it. You'll get the idea. I want you to clap. <laughs> clap real loud. You ready? <laughs> He's got to listen to me. I love you, man. I hope the best for you. I think everything's going to change. Okay? Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Take it off. What did I say? I don't know. The music was good, though. Okay. <laughs> he liked the music. Okay. Are you ready to clap again? Nothing? Okay. 
Okay, keep talking, keep, keep going. Well, wow. no problem, man. I'm for you, not against you. I think that's gonna be right easy, okay? Got it? You understand me? You understand me? No? Okay. Take it off. Did you hear it? Hey, it's a good song. Did you hear anything I said? No. no put it back on. All ready? Clap. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. I'm for you, not against you. I think that's gonna be great thing for you. You believe me? Okay, good. Hear me? Yep. Okay. No, you didn't. You ready? Clap. <laughs> I love you and I'm for you. What I say? I love you and I'm for you. You know what's crazy? That's how life is. The further you're away from God, the less you hear him. But that moment that you get close, you can hear him. It didn't matter if this music was going crazy and loud in his ear. He heard him. Thank you. I'm taking it. Cool. <laughs> Carl heard him. You see, here's the thing, church. When you are this, when you're a long way from God, when your storm's raging and life just completely stinks, how do you hear him? How do you hear him? You can't. But the moment you get over here and you're beside him, you're locked arms to arms, your foundation is in Jesus, you can hear him. You may get the most worst possible news of your life. But in that moment, Jesus is with you. I believe, church, we got to get close to God today. I don't, whether you've been a, a Nazarene for 60, 70, 25 years, it doesn't matter. We've got to get close to Jesus today. And I love the, 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 the they're not, those kids were not ashamed. They, they just came down. I said, well, if you want to come to the altar, they come, but if don't, you don't, but don't come because your neighbor comes, your friend comes. Come because God's God called, God's called you to come. And guess what? The altars were filled. Well, it was just, well, it's just emotional, Pastor Brian. No, it wasn't. To see, to see kids down there on their knees crying out, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Let me get close to you. That's childlike faith. There's a reason that Jesus talks about that. But we get so old, we, we've got it, we've got it, we, we understand it, you know. We, you know. Well, then maybe you should write a commentary and help me. Because I don't have it all together. I don't. I don't claim to, to know everything. I don't claim to be a good preacher. I just do what God's called me to do. And I'm never going to change it. You know how nervous I was this morning to get up here and to do this message? It frightened me. And God's like, why? Why? It's my people. They need to hear your word. They need to hear the truth. So my challenge is to you today. This is it. Simple, easy. If your heart's not right with God, this is where you need to be. Simple as that. Don't walk out the door saying, eh, I got time. You're not guaranteed the next two minutes. Uh, this is not a scare tactic. I'm just not trying to get you saved. I, I want you to understand that God's faithful. He wants that relationship with you. He just doesn't want surface level. He wants root level, deep level. Remember I talked about several weeks ago, it feels like it's been a month ago, but I talked about the roots. I talked about the sequoia tree, mile wide, inch deep, angel oak, one of the biggest tap roots there are. Grow so deep into that firm foundation. Where are you today? Where are you at? I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that question. If I have prayed once this, these last three weeks, I have prayed 2,000 times. And every time, the Lord speaks. And says, I've got you, man. I've got you. He's got you too. Are you going to let him? Or are you just going to continue to play church? Check off a box. Came to church this week, check. I'm not checking any more boxes. I'm not. 
I am focused, and I am all in for what God wants me to do. I want you to know that I love you. If I didn't love you, then I would sugarcoat a little more, but I'm not going to do that because I love you. And you need to hear the truth. If your heart's not right, when that day comes, you meet Jesus, straight to hell you go. It's not worth it. It's not. But I hope and I pray that when that day comes, <laughs> you close your eyes on this earth for the last time. When you wake up, you see the face of Jesus. And he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yesterday flying home, I couldn't help but to get overwhelmed because my phone went back to a picture. And it was my grandma. She died May 4th. A saint a world changer. And I realized in that moment, man, <laughs> my grandma, when she closed her eyes and opened them up, she saw the face of Jesus. And all the seeds that she planted within her, her whole time when she was in the Wesleyan church, all the seeds she planted. And it was almost like her telling me, Brian, I'm proud of you because you are planting seeds too. While I love all these kids and I pray for them, I pray for you the most. Because I see you all the time. And I know that God's got big plans for this church. We have to say yes and allow him to do so. I'm going to pray. If you want to come down and join me, great. If you don't, that's fine. That's between you and the Lord. But I feel that my heart needs to be down there praying. Not just for me, but for you and for our country. So if you want to come join me, come join me. Then I'll pray, and then, you know, then we'll go we'll do what we got to do. But I want you to know today, I end every camp just like this. I look them all in the eye, and I tell them I love you. I am for you. I am praying for you. And that's never going to change. It won't. You know the sad part about that is? Statistically, there are kids in that audience that have never heard those words. That kills me. And I tell them, but guess what? You have a Father in heaven that can love you even greater than I ever will. And he is for you. He will always be for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never abandon you. Instead, he's going to reach deeper into you and call you, it, call you his own. Let's pray. If you want to pray, come down and join me. If you don't, that's fine too, but I'm going to be down here praying.